week eight of the high school football season about to commence here at Durfee High School. Evan Massoud and BJ McDonald with you on Fred TV for the call as the Durfee Hilltoppers and the Bishop Stang Spartans square off in non-playoff football here. Hilltoppers, uh, last time B that you and I did a game, it was opening night and Durfee came out on top in that triple overtime thriller against Somerset. Since then, been a tough road, especially over the last two weeks on the road against Brockton and Barnstable. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, uh, Barnstable, Brockton, two very good playoff teams in Division I, and you know, Derek being a Division II team. I think you got a winnable game here and a good start with the kickoff return. Yeah, taken across the 40, no flags on that return, and the Hilltoppers will have really good field position. And we look back at some games this year, you know, the Somerset game really ended up, I mean, again, anytime you go into overtime, it's kind of anybody's game, and Durfee made that stop to win it. Um, ironically, you mentioned, and you brought up the point, that Somerset's in the playoffs right now, so that loss didn't hurt them. But for Durfee, there were, in my opinion, three losses, three games that really were winnable games, none more so than the Dartmouth game. Uh, on the road. But the Taunton game at home and the Nauset game at home really were close games. Turnovers really what decided it because the Hilltoppers were never really out of it. They go ahead, blown. Jay, go. Hey, there you go. Jay Hall cuts back inside and he's gone. To the 10, to the 5, touchdown Hilltoppers. What a start. That's exactly the start you're looking for anytime you come out after that delay with the light delay here, the first play of the game. Jay Hall, what's that, about 65 yards untouched. Great job by the offensive line. There was a huge hole there on the right side. Jay Hall tucked it away right down the sideline, cut it back. Great start for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, officially the ball was at the 44, so 56 yards to the house on one play. We're just uh, 22 seconds into it, and the Hilltoppers with the early lead. Oh, that's gonna be blocked. Bad snap, didn't get it placed, so the kick no good. So a blunder there, but great to have the lead less than 30 seconds into it. Now you mentioned the lights. Um, yeah, we had no lights. You see the photo on your screen right now. I took this pregame and um, the lights went off right about, I wanna say quarter to seven and um, something tripped. Everything else was lit. <laughs> the new building is was still lit. The scoreboard was on and the practice field was on and we were literally like this close to switch into the practice field, which would have been challenging. Um, but nonetheless, the lights came back on, no problem, and we're here. But this game getting started about a half an hour late um, here well, tonight. Great start though. I mean, we were talking a little bit as that first snap about the Hilltoppers coming in, losing the last couple games with Barnstable and, and Brockton on the road and being able to get back at home. I, I believe Stang is coming off a big win. La I believe it was last week over Dartmouth. Um, and that was, a, I think, according to the paper, it was the first time winning, uh, beating Dartmouth in 20 plus years. So a huge win for them. It, it Maybe a little bit of a letdown here. Uh, you, know, you get the delay, everything else going on. It was, uh, what do you got, 21-14 they beat Dartmouth last week. That was just their first road win of the season. They're four and three, Durfee two and five. But you know, how do you, how do you call <laughs> a staying game, a road game, when you're literally playing half a mile away from each other. So good return here for the Spartans. Uh -oh. Down at the 50 or just shy of. Um, but yeah, if there's one record that, or one stat that comes in makes, makes it feel a little better is that uh, staying only one and three on the road. They're on the road here, Durfee's at home, and now they start with that lead right away. So. And I think common opponents, too, when you look up, on, when you look at these two teams on paper, they probably match up pretty well, similar with records. Um, the, the common opponent being Dartmouth. Durfee losing a heartbreaker. Uh, I didn't see the game, but heard there was a couple questionable calls towards the end of that game. Where, uh, yeah, was you know, a brutal call. Looked like the kid stepped out of bounds and he ran down the sideline, so. They played them tough and they, mm -hmm. they lost that game and it was probably a coin flip game. And the same thing last week with Stang and Dartmouth, a coin flip game. So I think you're gonna see a good game here today and good glad to see Durfee get off on the right foot and play with the lead. I think that's something that they haven't uh, been able or had the opportunity to do throughout the season. And whenever you're playing with the lead and tilting the field the other way, I mean, that's always makes things a little bit easier. Oh yeah, for sure. Now the Dartmouth game, we, we did not, um, have that immediately on Fred TV because I was actually calling the game for Dartmouth Cable because Dartmouth had the road game. Uh, they had the home game. We had the road game. Uh, we did run it, 
And um, if you watch it back, it's also on our YouTube account. Nice stop on D on second down. But really, the, the questionable call came actually when Durfee was playing defense after turning the ball over. This ended up being Dartmouth's game-winning drive. Durfee was on defense, and it was right about the 40-yard line. Hilltoppers made the stop on fourth down. The line judge marked him where he went down. It was the right spot, a yard, a, a yard short. And then the official on the other side of the field came in and pushed him up a yard, and it gave him the first down by literally like the nose of the football. And, and then the play when the kid scored the touchdown, he was very close to stepping out of bounds. He was. And if yeah. you see it on film, it looks like he might have. Yeah, it's very, it's close. So there were some, there's some rough calls down the stretch. Gonna pass here on third down, and that's gonna be, I think, good for the first down. Pretty good pitch and catch there from the yeah. quarterback, Andrew DiGiamano. That's a short spot. I thought he was past yeah, the 40. Yeah, we were talking, we were talking about, about the spot. spot. Really, I thought that was that was good for a first. That's a tough spot for the staying Spartans. I think they got gypped a yard. You run that play right on third and long, you're third and nine, you run a 10 yard comeback and thinking you're past the sticks, you came back to the ball, but looks like they maybe came back a little too far, it was a yard short. So fourth and maybe just a little more than a yard, they're gonna go for it. That was uh, Andrew DiGiamo, the senior QB, his first pass of the night after two running plays. Didn't amount to much, they'll hand it off here and it will be a first down, the running back for 42, Francisco Hernandez Manon, a junior from New Bedford. Hernandez Manon on the carry, tackled by number 58, Jason Babola. The run is good enough for Spartans, first down. So the Spartans move the chains here. First and 10 across the 40. Into the outside, tackle made. Looked like the same play the other way. The fourth down play off tackle to the right. That, that first down play off tackle to the left. I think the first two plays, Durfee plugged it up in the middle. Robitaille in the middle kind of controlled that line of scrimmage on the first two plays of the drive. And now it looks like Stang might be double teaming him, trying to pin him down and running off tackle. Holly with the tackle after a gain of six yards, so second and four. You know, talk about the Barnstable loss, the Brockton loss for Durfee, really blowout losses. Haven't seen some blowout losses like that in a while. Um, actually, really, they were the first ones this season because um, most of the games have been pretty close, about one possession or so. And um, you know, talking to Coach Powers before the game, assistant Coach Powers, and uh, he said, you know, it's it's tough because they're, they're big teams, number one, but they're also, a lot of them have seniors on their teams. They're, they have way more experience. This is still a young Durfee team. You know, they, they've had six, some success this year. They've had some games they should have won. And I look at it and I say a couple of those games where there were some turnovers or some errors, um, you know, if they're seniors and not sophomores, the core players here, they, they might be four and three like staying right now and on the bubble for a playoff. Yeah, I mean, those are all coin flip games too. You know, as you get, you look down this Durfee roster, I mean, it's sophomore, junior, junior, sophomore. There's there's not many seniors on, even on the roster. Blocked, batted away. The ball is incomplete, but I always like that. Play until the whistle and Hall did just that. Picked it up in hopes that maybe he'd take it back. So it's gonna be fourth down in uh, about three yards after the incomplete, fourth and four. given that Stang went for it further back. I'm assuming that they're gonna go for it here. They're in the huddle and ready to rock. Quick fix of the ball. The spot was a little too far. Here we go, fourth and four. Look at the pass. Oh, and he's going down with the sack. Gigiamo is sacked in the backfield by number 56, Jeffrey Castro. That was Jeffrey Castro, a sophomore. There it is, another sophomore. Sophomores and yeah. juniors leading the way for the Hilltoppers. You gotta love it. We did. This is senior night here tonight. And we'll have that ceremony for you to see at the half. Uh, but just a handful of seniors on this team. So that's why when we say it's a young team, uh, we're not kidding. <laughs> this is a young group of players. 
Nice spin move on first down as Durfee took over right at about the 35 yard line. Niger Montero on the carry. That was Niger Montero, number 10. Gain of about five yards. It'll Picked up five halfway there. The You'll take that all day, four, five, six yards a pop. Yeah, your favorite, uh, your favorite line is stay ahead of the chain, stay ahead of the sticks. That's it. <laughs> Sometimes your best, your best defense is your offense, right? Mm -hmm. Second and five. Especially in high school football, the clock goes, you, you know, if you can control the line of scrimmage and put together some six, seven, eight, nine play drives, you're gonna eat up, you know, six, seven, eight, nine oh, yeah. minutes. And the other team can't score if you have the ball. That was a good run from Hall, bouncing off a defender. After only about two yards, he picked up another two after that before being spun down and it's gonna be third and one. Jay's a tough kid, and he does yeah. it all for the Hilltoppers. You see him on offense, defense. He's a, he kickoffs, extra points. I mean, he's all over the place. So as a sophomore, you know, you hope he comes into a leadership role in the next couple of years and can, you know, take this team over the hump where we were just talking about. You go from two or three wins as sophomores to, you know, four or five, six wins as juniors, and then by the time you're seniors, hey, we can beat anybody on our schedule. Right. It's, it's about building confidence. And, and you know, too, you mentioned... Uh, Mentioned Hall. I think what we're seeing is our, uh, our official here. Okay, now he winds the clock. I think what we're seeing, though, a lot of times, it's really it's hard to say that you got a clear-cut offensive group and a clear-cut defensive group. So often now we're seeing players playing both sides of the ball, and it's I think that's it's, a great job there. Second effort. Did he get it? I think he, he did. did. Yep, he got two yards. He needed one. So that's a great effort there, but I didn't I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no. But yeah, you're right. You're looking for football players. You're looking for athletes. Right. You know, you're looking for even kids that are not playing. Wrestlers, track, you know, track stars, baseball players. Football, it's a difficult game, but if you're an athlete, you know, it should be something you think about playing because you can find a spot on offense, on defense, on special teams. And when you have athletes out there, guys are interchangeable. It makes the coach's life you know, a lot easier when you can move a guy from receiver to running back to quarterback, you know, to defensive back and shuffle guys around and keeps the other team on their toes too. Bit of a hesitation. Look at that, putting the shoulder down. Hall having a great start to this game here. Picks up nine yards. He's going to be just short of the first down as the Hilltoppers cross midfield. It's a great run there by Jay Hall. Again, Stang's going to call a timeout. Mm. Looks like, is that Coach Golden over there losing his mind? He's not usually one to get too wound up. I know. You said you've known Coach uh, Golden a long time. I have a lot of respect for Coach Golden. He's a great guy. He's been around, you know, high school sports forever. Um, he was the head coach at New Bedford High for years and years. He left New Bedford High and was up at Catholic Memorial for a few years. Just came back to staying, I believe, in the last couple of years, took over the role of athletic director. Um, you, you know, his son was a great player at staying in the last couple of years. I believe he's playing in college somewhere now. So just a great guy. Um, like I said, I have a lot of respect for him. We had a lot of fun playing against him in, in high school. And, you know, it's fun to see those guys now as adults that you've played against and, you know, competed against. And they, they still have respect for you, even though I was a, a high school kid competing against him. So it's pretty cool. Ball at the 46, two yards shy, second and two. We come out of the timeout. We'll run it again, good for a there first down. Is. And a few more. You gotta give, giving the running backs a lot of credit, and that wasn't Jay that time, that was uh, Keyshawn Rue it looked like on that run but you got to give the, the offensive line some credit to this start here in the mm. first quarter too they've opened up some holes and controlled the line of scrimmage and again like you said you're putting together a drive you're now under five minutes to go in the first quarter and they can't score if we get the ball oh yeah time of possession protecting the football and what I'm liking is that you know, I saw this uh, we played uh, Diamond was home last week and so we were, we were over there for the Bengals Again, putting the shoulder down. The Hilltoppers playing physical early here. 
Well, one of the things that I'm seeing here, and, and I mentioned this in the Diamond game, and again, they're, they're kind of a young team as well. You know, they were snapping the ball with the running backs literally like two yards behind the line. There was no room for them to even hand the ball off and get a running start. Here you're seeing here, you're seeing what you should be doing. So this is a good example for those of you who caught last week's game. The running backs are, what, seven yards? Oh, at least five yards behind but the it's line all, here. Yeah, and it's you can timing. get, you get the, yeah, timing, you get the jump. Look at, again, putting the shoulder down, they're pumping the legs, trying to get a push from behind. Not too much happening that time on second down, but I think maybe a yard, so you're looking at probably third and four. Well, and historically, I mean, that was kind of what Durfee hung their hat on was, you know, when Coach Winoski was here, it was tough, clean, hard-nosed football. And, you know, he maybe didn't have the record of, you know, a Brockton or some of the guys that, you know, won hundreds of games and state championships, but Durfee was always in games, and I think that's why Coach Golden always had a lot of respect for uh, Coach Winoski and the way we played on, on Thanksgiving and the way Coach Winoski's teams competed on Thanksgiving. You know, you talk about moving guys around, it was always something different on Thanksgiving. You had an extra week to get ready to play, so you could throw different wrinkles at him, and it, he used to, he would talk about that, how right. it was always something a little bit different. And I think now that you've got Taylor Brown as the head coach, a disciple of Coach Winoski's, you know, system, took the team to the Super Bowl in 2001, and just being, uh, having that same mentality, like, you know what, even if the other team has more talent, we're gonna go out and we're gonna play harder than them, we're gonna hit harder than them, and we're gonna play the game the right way. Take, like you said, take care of the football. And I think when you bring that attitude, you earn the other team's respect, you know, and you're not losing games 60 to nothing. You, you mentioned it earlier, yeah. you're in football games, you're competing, you're hitting. At the end of the game, you can shake the other team's hand and they, and they know that, you know, you played your butt off. First down, there is a flag coming in, but it comes flying. It's probably gonna come back. Probably. Holly made it all the way down to the end zone. He was untouched, so. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's probably maybe a hold down the field here. Well, I just saw one of the officials point toward the defense, so it might be on the defense. I doubt it. But the, yeah, the fact that they're calling the play back. Holding. Might have to offense. get a little creative with the play call now. You go from you know third and five to now third and 15 or so. Might have to see well, it's Isaiah a it's a spot it a foul. Bit. So, oh, okay. so it was down the good field. news is, it, yeah, it was past the uh, the line to gain. So now you're looking at third and eight. So they really lost three yards, but what they lost was six points. Because yeah. Holly was in the end zone and Stang was nowhere near him. The Spartans were completely fooled on that run. Pressure coming, can uh -oh. he get around the pile? He's gonna run into some traffic. And he gets taken down at the line of scrimmage. Might even be for a loss of a yard. So that's quite the turn of events there. Six points yeah, negated hurts. thanks to a hold. You hate to see that. And it's going to be fourth and nine. And I feel like that's been the story of the year, too, for the Hilltoppers. Even the, the Somerset game and a couple of other games that I've seen, they've had big plays called back. Yeah. Um, the term, shoot yourself in the foot. You know, sometimes that that ends up happening, and you know, of course, holding. I think <laughs> holding can be very subjective. You know, oh, especially in high school football, you can call it every play. Exactly, and, and you know, and that could. It's even fair to say that you could call it on every play, almost in the NFL. So it's it's it depends on. Oh, oh no. loose. It doesn't matter. It, I mean, either way, fourth down. It would have been a hard play. Would have liked to see the play get off though, and see what they could do, but they will turn the ball over at the 40. That hurts. Yeah. So what would have been a touchdown is negated thanks to the hold. And the Hilltoppers come up empty on their second drive. First and 10 at their own 40-yard line. Got uh, Jake Fitzgerald down on the field tonight while we got our student crew on the roof with Cam Norwood and Nathan Sauce that here and great. another sack. That's a big loss for the Spartans, about seven yards as Is that Ariel Pereira? Number 88, that's Ariel Pereira. 6'3", 270-pound sophomore. Ariel Pereira. That's a big sack right there. They lost officially six yards, so it'll be second and 16. But uh, no, I was saying, so Jake, we've been working on, uh, starting on a promo. 
so we can uh, kind of put together a true kind of opening sequence for all our games, trying to get compiled footage from all the sports. And in addition, um, putting together something at the same time for athletic director Boston to use at the middle schools for recruiting. And um, so Jake down on the field, another good tackle, no gain. Yeah, I think that's one thing that the school as a whole and, and the administration and, you know, the coaching staff combined everybody as a joint effort in the community trying to get more kids to come out and play. You know, it's, it would be nice to see more kids on the sidelines every year. And I know that you need to be successful in order to, you know, generate some interest. But whatever we can do as a community to get kids on the field, I mean, it's great that there are some there are kids here, you know, watching the game or pretending to watch the game from the sidelines. But it'd be even better if a lot of these kids were, you know, on the sidelines and playing a role, you know, having to go to practice every day. Mm. Almost picked off. I knew it was going to be overshot. Uh, definitely overshot Liam Cogliano, but uh, almost picked off. So fourth down and 16. But no, B, you're right. Um, and, and, you know, I look at having done the story basically every summer since I've been on the staff here is I look at the Fall River Falcons. That should be your number one source for players. Now, granted, not every player is going to play the rest of their life all the way into high school. But there are so many kids. And number, Coach Bear, uh, you know, I had interviewed him in the summer. And he said, numbers are up this year. We have great numbers. And it seems to go up every year, even if it's just a little. Very rare do they have a down year. Yeah, and you've got the, they're doing a great job with the middle oh, school yeah. programs. Oh, that was almost blocked. You might have got a piece of it. Get away from it. Get out of there. <laughs> Coach McDonald. <laughs> well, that ball can bounce any which way, and if that thing hits your foot, now they fall of, on it. Yeah, you know? and it's their ball. Just get away from it. Right. No, you're absolutely right. And, th and that, to me, those are the little things that, like, we know that just from watching right. football. Don't go near the ball. From watching for years on TV, we know that. You don't have to play to know that. So it's those are some of the little things that you're right. All right, the punt is over your head. It's on the ball. Just whatever. Leave it. So Durfee gets it after the punt. Trying to bounce outside. Oh, found a hole. There it is. Go. Hold that ball across the 45. And a big sprint pickup of nearly 20 yards. But you mentioned, you know, the Fall River Falcons and the feeder programs of the middle school flag leagues that they have and, you know, everything that's going on, right. which is great. And it, it should continue. The, the difficult thing, and I think the thing that, uh, the school in, as a whole needs to focus on is the fact that there are other avenues and other places kids can play football in the city now. You can go play at Diamond, you can go play at the charter school, yeah. you know, you can, uh, Conley has a co-op program, you know, so you have other options. So you I think got, that's you got, why You it's even huge. have Stang. There are, there is a Fall River guy, a senior, Evan Brady. Yeah, and you look at some of the guys <laughs> you know? that they've lost in the last couple of years that have gone up to Catholic Memorial and different schools yeah. in the area that, you know, are guys that are, uh, you know, prep schools and things like that. You're not only competing with the schools within your city for, for these kids and these athletes that you want to play, at, you know, here on Ellsbury Street, but you're also competing across New England with the kids that end up going to prep school and you know wanting to play at a higher level. So right. I think anything that the school can do, that the and the administration can do, you know, com in conjunction with the coaching staff and any alumni, I'd be willing to help with whatever I can to try to get generate interest. And if you know if it takes making a 30 second video with Jake on the sideline and putting some rap music and stuff in the background to get kids to come out and play, then let's do it. You know, right. whatever we need to do to try to take this program, because you mentioned the, the Falcons and the, the core these guys are Pop Warner kids that played yeah. in, you know, through the years together and with the Falcons. So th that's the building blocks of a, a solid program. And I, I think any high school coach or you know, anybody in any high school sport would uh, agree. It's not rocket science. It's mm -hmm. just how do you get there? And that's the question. And there are a few people, folks, if you're watching at home, that know this better than B, who there you go, go. was a three-sport player for four years, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. So you, you know... Another good run, Javon Holly that time with the carry and the Hilltoppers into Spartans territory. That run's good enough for a Hilltopper.
First and 10 from the 37. That quick timeout while we were chatting, that was the end of the first quarter already. So again, and that's what you get with a lot of running plays. We mentioned that earlier. And uh, the Hilltoppers on their third drive here, hoping to find that end zone a second time. That's uh, Rue, I believe. It's another great job by the offensive mm. line up front. Yeah, I'm impressed. They're making, they're, they're, they're holding back the defense and they're opening up some lanes for the running game. We don't usually see a lot of success right up the middle like that. Goes back to the coach Nathan Levesque, first year offensive line coach, former Durfee standout, went on to play a WPI. You know, he was right around Coach Brown's year. They played together. Uh, so it's cool to see those guys coming back and alumni on the staff. You look at Stang's roster, they got a bunch of alumni on their staff. Yeah. Look at that push. That should have been only four yards. He picked up almost 15. Rue, on the carry. He has Rue with another. the first down. And the Hilltoppers at the 20, they're in the red zone. First and, 10 Durfee from and they the haven't thrown a pass all night out. Right? And if you know what, if this is working, <laughs> keep the ball Sit. down, keep it on the ground. <laughs> you know? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? Absolutely. Until Stang shows that they're going to button up the middle there and you can't go anywhere, keep it running. Even that, you'll take that. What's about maybe three yards? Three, four yards, uh -huh. yeah, for sure. Yeah, three yards, second and seven coming up. I was listening to a podcast with Jim Harbaugh the other day. Yeah. And he said he ran the same play 11 times in a row. The most he's ever ran the same play in a row was 11 times. Really? And the guy interviewing him said, well, <laughs> what, what, you know, what made you stop running it? He said, we scored. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, you know, if they can't stop it, keep running it. I know. Oh. oh no. This is a drive killer. Yeah. Well, he's going to get around, and he's going to make something of it. So Are you serious? Javon Holly to the end oh zone oh, and no. a flag at the last second. Oh, no. But he was already in the end zone. Who's the flag on, though? By number three, Javon Holly. Oh, no. Put the flag the away. For a 20 yard score. There is a flag on the play. Very late, yeah. Our <laughs> Billy Thrin, our As soon PA as he knew he was going to score, he threw the flag. Of course. Oh my God. That's garbage. Holding on the Hilltoppers. Two, it's like they wait two, until yep. they score. Two and touchdowns the that have been taken away by our friends in pinstripes. Well, so much for that made me uh, put my foot in my mouth there. So much for that. Wait, talk about making something out of nothing. Yeah, yeah seriously. So, and first then you of take all, it away from them. first of all, Holly deserves all the credit in the world because that was insane. Now, Stan calling the timeout. Timeout. And that's the second touchdown that Javon scored that they've had that's yep. been called back. So it's going to be the ball actually is spotted at the same spot here. So the, the hold happened 10 yards down the field. Yeah, so both penalties. Yeah, it's like, it was oh, at the 8-yard oh, line. They're about to score. Here's the flag. Yeah, that's... that's. What are you going to do? you got to control the things you can control, right. right? That's what they say. Terribly frustrating. Spartans using their second timeout of the half. Now breaking the huddle. And the Hilltoppers, basically, all they lost, we say all they lost, all they lost was a touchdown, because it's second and seven from the same spot. It's like playing in the park, you get a redo. You get a redo, but you know, hopefully the redo counts for six points this time. Maybe third time's a charm. They do decide to pass. It's complete. 
diving down shy of the first, maybe about two yards. And he's a playmaker, that kid, yeah, Javon Holly. I mean, they're just looking to get the oh, yeah. ball in his hands, try to get him in space. I know he's a basketball player as well. So yeah, Holly had a great year Holly last year as a freshman on varsity uh, for, uh, for basketball. Really had a tremendous freshman year. And it's great that he came back out and played football again, you know, and yeah. built on that. I know they had a tough year last year as freshmen, but a lot of those guys that gained invaluable experience playing on the varsity level as freshmen, now you're seeing it start to pay off here as sophomores as the season runs, you know, winds down, and you're going to see it pay off even more next year when they all come back. Third and four, and they'll run it. Good for the first down, still on his feet. Diving forward, does he get to the end zone? Going to be maybe a yard first short. And goal. First and goal from probably the one or two yard line. I think you could have ran through that hole, though, Ev. <laughs> I appreciate your faith in me, B, but there's a reason I'm wearing the headset right now. <laughs> Not taking anything away from Jay. That's a great run. He dropped his shoulders there at the end, but a lot of credit to the offensive line. That was a big yep. hole to run through. Once again, the O-line making it happen. It's going to be first and goal from the two. And the clock keeps rolling. 8.20 to play in the first half. And the Hilltoppers just two yards away from going up by two touchdowns. There you go, beat him to the corner. Oh, he got it. Touchdown, Hilltoppers, and not a yellow flag Holly in sight. Carrier, he takes it in for a Hilltoppers touchdown. Javon Holly just looking to get him in space, get him outside. Yep. I don't think that play was probably designed to be out there, but he saw an opening, beat the guy to the corner, and 12-0 got, 12 Hilltoppers. Got him the score. Third time's a charm for Holly after two of them were taken away. So 12 nothing, Durfee. You know, the way they're running it, I'd like to see them go for two right now after the botched kick last time. I'm surprised they're not going for it, but. That's a good point. I mean, really. They haven't had a, I mean, the only, the couple bad plays they've had were kind of broken plays with the bad snap. Yeah. It's a good kick, though. And he missed it? Oh, he missed it wide left. Kind of towed it. He doesn't, he's not lining up kind of on an angle to kind of sweep it. It's kind of towing it straight ahead. And that, you know, you're not hitting a square when it's on your toe. But honestly, I mean, I'm, so many teams just go for two, but in this case, I'm, I'm kind of surprised you were down. You know, it was 12, right. try to get to 14. Agreed, do I not give it to Javon it, again? Yeah, or Jay's been you're, at, you're asking for two yards and they're getting four or five on every play right up the gut. We'll take the touchdown well, though. 12 nothing we'll, <laughs> Hilltoppers, eight minutes yeah. to go and a half. When was the last time Durfee had a 12 nothing lead? I don't think it's been this year. Oh, it hasn't. So it's a great. And it wasn't that's last a good, year. No, the guy's got to be feeling good, especially to come back after having two of them taken away and that last one just taken away to come back and still be able to score. Well, I think it speaks good volumes yeah. too. To you know, you got to give the kids credit for you get that stupid half hour delay where the lights go out. Right. And, you know, and it would have been very easy to not be ready to play after that delay. You're all amped up in senior night. You know, you're five minutes from kickoff and the lights go out. You know, now you got to wait 45 minutes or whatever it was before yeah. the game starts. And I think it, it seems like it's paid off for Durfee, and it seems like Stang might be the team that was uh, sleepwalking a little bit here through the first half. A little squib kick on the, on the oh, ground. On it. I was going to say, I think that might have been touched, but Spartans do fall on it at the 28, 29 yard line. That's a good kick. I mean, yeah. that's a tough thing in high school football a lot of times is covering the kick. I know a lot of times, you know, as a the coaching staff kind of cringes when uh, the ball is kicked deep and the guy, you know, you see it all too often when oh, yeah. the team scores and you get a nice deep kick and the kid runs it back. Well, we saw that last year yeah. against Dartmouth right here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, oh yeah, all too many times. And, and so that's I think why if you could put the ball on the 29 yard line every time yeah. as a coach, I think you're gonna take that. No, that's not bad. And that's probably, and that's why you don't see a lot of times the ball kicked in the air. A lot of times you see those squib kicks because maybe you hope it bounces off the guy and your guys are coming, you grab it and you get the ball. Probably a better shot at that. Fumble. Oh, fumble, the Hilltoppers yes. have it. Oh. Six points coming Durfee's way on wow. the fumble return. Jaden Lewis with the scoop and score. Talk about a turn of events there again. No sooner did I say that Stang was sleepwalking through the first half. They put the ball on the ground. Durfee picks it up and scores, and it's 18 right. to nothing. 18 to nothing, the score. And here's they're going for two. Yeah. As they should. Yeah. 
I mean, take nothing away from from the kicker, but you know, he, ha he has missed two. One was blocked. I think he would admit he'd probably rather get the handoff than try to kick it. <laughs> yeah. Coach, let me run it. I don't want to kick this one. Right. Again, with the success they've had. So we're going for two this time to try to make it 20 to nothing. Oh, oh they're going to throw it. <laughs> they're going to pass it. They're making liars out of us. Incomplete. What is going on <laughs> with the point after and the two point conversions? Two -point My gosh. Conversion attempt to pass by Thomas is incomplete. <laughs> 18. <laughs> 18 nothing the score. That's fantastic. All right, so another one. When was the last time Durfee had a fumble return for a touchdown? <laughs> been a long time. I have no idea. It's been oh, too just long. Just a defensive touchdown. Yeah, I mean, about that. An interception yeah. for a touchdown. It's Man, it's been a long time. That's awesome. Oh, the Hilltoppers having as good a start as they've had to a ball game that we've seen in years. 18 nothing. Jake Fitzgerald back here in the booth after getting us some stock footage on the sidelines. How'd it go? It went great. <laughs> nice job, Jake. <laughs> Jake, a man a few words when he's not calling the game. <laughs> Jake did soccer with me uh, about, what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, I think it was. Well, I, yeah, against Brockton. Well, because Jake was holding out on me. He's been working with me for a year and a half, and he finally just tells me, you know, I played soccer for like 10 years. Like, great, when are you calling a game? <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, Durfee going to kick off again. Now up by three touchdowns. It's a line drive kick. We've kind of seen everything. Fielded cleanly, and yeah. here we go. Off to the races. Uh-oh. Trevor went out of bounds. Right at the 45, 50. By number three, Greg Morales. That's a good run back though for, uh, it was Morales. Morales runs the ball back to the Hilltopper 46 yard line. It will be first and 10 Spartans. Morales from uh, Lakeville, sophomore. I was reading online, there was a lot of conversation um, regarding the Catholic schools in the area, uh, not Stang specifically, I think Stang was uh, opposed to this, but you know, you talk of some of the bigger Catholic schools, the Central Catholics, you know, up in uh, Andover, uh, Catholic Memorial, Bishop Keen, those teams got kids from all over the state, so it's, it's not really fair when uh, you've got kids, you know, you've got three high school football teams in Fall River, and you've got a team like Catholic Memorial, drawing kids from all over the state or Boston College High School you know they've got kids from all over so there was conversations of there should there be a league of you know just Catholic school Morales teams yeah. this is a new relatively new playoff system and realignment yards. every year as far as after short, your far. whatever it is six or seven games now you get put in a pool because you didn't make the playoffs and mm. Durfee's had some success in these games you yeah. know in the last couple of years so it, it, it has worked out for Durfee um, yeah and I don't mind telling you that every year trying to figure out the alignment and stuff with the divisions and every, how it changes year to year is absolutely hellacious It's for like me. the old school BCS, oh right? Gosh. You don't know how anything works. Everything's got points and, and whatnot. It's so, so convoluted. It's like there's got to be a better way. But... Uh, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not against that. In fact, you know, what I think they should do is what they do in other sports. They do in baseball and what they do in hockey is they they take that super eight. So yeah. take the eight best teams in the state. You know, it's probably going to be pretty much the same schools every year. Right. Put them in a pool and let the other public school teams or smaller Catholic school teams like a Bishop Stang play in their regular divisions. But yeah. the teams that That's are the you one, know, the D one A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Zavarians of the world, the Boston College High Schools, you know, yeah. Catholic Memorial. Uh, any of those schools that are drawing kids from all over the state, yeah. how do you expect Second public schools, even a school like Brockton, to compete mm. at that level? It just doesn't make any sense. Those schools should be all, you know, almost yeah. in their own league or, or some type of Super 8 like they do in, in hockey and baseball. And I don't know why it's never been discussed in football. Yeah. No, like when if Brockton beats one of those teams, it's like when Durfee beats Brockton. It's like it's a rarity. Right. Brockton always has our number. They always have Brockton's number, you know. Durfee calling a timeout there second. So both sides left with one. It's a big hold here for Durfee. Second oh, yeah. and long, you know. 
keep a goose egg on the board before the half. Yeah, because theoretically with 557, only one timeout for the visitors. If you can hold them here, maybe get the ball with like four and a half to play, you can run that down, down right. their throats because they've really had success. I, um, I'm interested to get your thoughts because this it was a hot topic last fall and it's becoming that now uh, again because we were at the tournament. Boys playing in girls sports. Uh, the field hockey situation. I don't know enough about it. And I'll, I guess I'll take the political yeah. answer there. But uh, to me, it doesn't seem fair. You know, I just feel like right. boys naturally are bigger and stronger and faster. Mm -hmm. You know, you take it's just sim seems to me like simple biology that that's yeah. just kind of the way it is. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know enough about it. I don't. I don't know any of the rules of field hockey. I, I, I probably haven't seen a field hockey game since I was in high school. Right. So I, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But on its face, on the surface, when you see a team win the state title and their two, two or three best players are boys, mm -hmm. it just doesn't Playing seem against right. All girls. It just doesn't seem fair to all the other girls. Right. And it and I think it diminishes and it takes away a lot of the credit from the girls that are on the, the state championship does. team. You know, even the, they're winning. So. You're, you're sitting uh, a girl who, who worked hard to get on a girls' team. Uh -oh. You're sitting her for the boys to play. Yeah, I just you know that's that's you know I asked a couple coaches, local coaches, um, and uh, you know they're saying they can't remember one one of the uh, Somerset players just got who, who was one of the boys just got his hundredth goal. They said they can't remember the last time a female got 100 long, goals in their career. <laughs> yeah, so he's probably well, got another season too, right? No, I think uh, he's. A, I think he was a senior this year. If I, if I read it, I mean, not so, taking Somerset, anything away from those. No, but boys, that's the thing. If they worked hard to learn the game and they want to play, that's awesome. But it, the point is that those who are defending it and saying there's so much interest, then great. Then go to the MIAA and start a bloody league. Yeah. Let the girls play, and then let the guys play. Or at least have some restrictions because you know in girls volleyball as wow some great defense the Hilltoppers. Niger Montero with really? the sack yeah that's gonna bring up a third and a mile so that's the stop you're looking for it sure is five to go you know third and second of 20, more than almost, 20 yeah. yeah 22 23 you know in girls volleyball there's so few boys volleyball teams around there's more girls so for example Diamond had a boy on the girls volleyball team because they don't have boys volleyball. But there's certain stipulations on to what the male player can do. He can't play a full rotation in every aspect of the game. Maybe that's what it needs. Maybe it need, there needs to be some yeah, some just, contingency. I, I don't know. You know, and, and I. It's not to discredit anybody. It's not to make anybody feel guilty. Or no, anything. you're just trying to the, level the, the playing field. Exactly. We're talking about you know. Somerset has outscored their opponents this season. They're 18 and 0, by the way. 173 to 3. Wow. That's not right. That's insane. Yeah. That's that's absurd. And, and, and I'm not saying I'm not saying goals. it's only because the boys are on the team. The girls on that team are talented players too. Yeah. They are. You don't end yes, up 18. Yeah, I have no you know, I've never seen You don't, don't end up 18 it. and 0 because of yeah. what maybe two or three boys on a team. That's not the reason they're 18 and 0. But does it give them an advantage when they're playing against an all-female team in the postseason? Of course it does. When one of the one of go your ahead, male Jay, players, go. you know, one of your male players has a hundred goals for his career. Yeah, of course it's making a difference. Agreed. I mean, like I said, it's a I've hot never topic. It's, play, a, and it's a sore subject with a lot of people oh, yeah. who defend it. You know, Somerset's close by. Again, it's not to. It's not to rag on them, and honestly, if they didn't win the state tournament and go 18-0 again this year, we probably wouldn't even be talking about it. But the fact is, is that there are a lot of teams in the area that feel they have two automatic losses playing Somerset because they can't compete against the boys. So it's either drop Somerset or force themselves to put boys on the team, which is not what it's about. They got a girls' league. There you go. There nice you go. Run. Hilltoppers. It's Rue joining the party. Fourth touchdown of the half for the Hilltoppers. Oh, another flag. This guy. Same guy every time. Where's the flag? That was a great run. What's he talking about? Well, he just made the direction to the...
This is uh, really nice. Yeah, three, so folks, it's 18 nothing right now. Should be 36 nothing. Well, we got one on we got one on that drive. The last drive we scored after they they called one. Right to say it's still but but it should be nothing. yeah. It's still, it's still just, that's it's you know, enough now. I mean enough. I, I don't know. No, really, because it's oh, only been called on the three times that the Hilltoppers made it to the end zone. Those are your only flags in the game. Must be a pretty good advantage. Must be a pretty good hold. I have no idea. Sorry, right, do it again. Same play. Right. First and 15. There it is. Go ahead. Leaping across the pile. Hall ahead, still Jake, on his feet. First down and more. Look at that run. I think they made Jason first contact with him around the 40-yard line. Yep. He just kept his feet going, Justin dropped Hedges. his shoulders. I mean, that's a great, great job downfield. That's all no saying here, take your flag. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And that's all right. We'll eat up a little more clock and punch one more in before mm -hmm. that happens. Durfee going to get the ball at halftime. No. No, they no, received, they they received the, the opening kick. Yeah, That's right. So right Durfee's going to kick at the second half. Oh, no. Holly's still on his feet. Boy, he just didn't go down. Holly, the ball carrier. Planted. <laughs> Initial hit made by number 53, Ben Grout. It's going to be a loss, though, for the Hilltoppers. Clock was still rolling. I think he, he did go out of bounds, so probably going to add a couple seconds, maybe like back up to 302. That kid's a big kid, 88, Ariel Pereira. Big boy. Yeah. 6'1", 6'3", 270-pound sophomore. Oh, yeah. Big kid. Mm-hmm. So they reset the clock to three minutes, but for first, <laughs> the first time you'll ever see two minutes and 60 seconds on the clock. <laughs> is that gonna be minutes or seconds though? Is that gonna be right? Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> that is like, that's funny. That's what, we're, that's what the scorers were told to put in. Passes complete across the middle. That kid's a player, Cruz. Yeah, Cruz with the catch. Still on his this. feet. He wants the touchdown. Oh, he's going to be just short. Oh, man. Thomas I'll tell you something. I like what we're seeing from Brian Durfee Cruz. tonight. Yeah, that's a big time play out there, Brian yep. Cruz. Nice throw by Cruz Isaiah Thomas. Hit him right in the numbers, but Cruz line. got out in space, It'll made a couple guys miss, no broke topper. a few tackles. First and goal inside the five. And I know Coach Brown and Coach Powers speak very highly of him, too. Yeah. Uh, we haven't mentioned his name much tonight, but Brian Cruz is a junior, mm -hmm. you know, wide receiver, defensive back, and he kind of does it all for them, too. I think he's, what is he? yeah, he is a junior. Oh, yeah. No, he does. Part of the reason we haven't said it is because the running game's been so prolific as they hand it off. It Touchdown, on Durfee! Cue. On ball cue. Ball That's his Jason Hall's he second touchdown of the night. Touchdown. He's got two. Jaden Lewis has one on the... Scoop and score, and Javon Holly has the other one, right? Yep. 24 0. That one will stand. And I know it's only the first half, 218 to play in the half, but I can't tell you how nice it is to call a game and feel relaxed. This is fantastic. I'm sure Coach Brown feels the same I way. I was just going to say, oh my gosh, there's so many nail biters and so many times Hilltoppers are playing from behind. This has been as good of a first half as I've seen in, in years for Durfee. Offensively, defensively, it's been fantastic. Got a lot to be proud of right now, especially when you consider, again, the touchdowns they got taken back to just stay with it, not let it get in your head. Run it. Nope. Passing, nice. caught! Good nice. for the two points. Great throw on the run, rolling out to his left. And 26, again, nothing. There's Brian Cruz with a nice catch. Yep, falling down to the ground, making the catch. 26 nothing Hilltoppers, wow. two minutes Thomas to go in the first half. Wow. Pass attempt is complete. To number eight, Brian Cruz.
Well, you hope in these next couple weeks that winning can become a habit for the Hilltoppers and you build some momentum heading into next season. Um, right. I, you know, with the new format, I don't think, I think they used to release all three games, but now they don't anymore, so you just play it week to week, so yeah. we don't know who they play next week. That's correct. So, um, and part of the reason why is, is because as the brackets are kind of a fluid situation, you know, you're going to have some teams who, who made the tournament in their brackets, they're going to get eliminated. They, they're also going to get thrown into this pool. Um, yeah, because I know there were some questions. You don't want to play the same team two or three times. I know there's some issues with that the first couple of years, but they kind of rolled this out. Um, so, yeah, taking into account play a different team every week. Right. But gearing up for New Bedford, and New Bedford's got their best team they've had in years. Serious. Uh, started the season 6-0 and and lost a tough one last week to Brockton, but that's going to be a tough Thanksgiving Day game for the Hilltoppers here. It will. It certainly will be. They're stacked with upperclassmen who are trying to go out on top. You, know, you mentioned that, the pool system here for the non-playoff teams. Did this happen? You mentioned about playing the same team. One of the weirdest ones, and this was early on in the um, in this system, which I think came out in 2014, I want to say. Right around the time Taylor took over. Um, I, we, we were over at Conley. It was week 10, so this was right before Thanksgiving. They played... Um, Pope John Paul II High School out of Hyannis, the Lions. And they played them on Thanksgiving too, right? That's their Thanksgiving opponent. So they played the Thanksgiving opponent, which is supposed to be like one in, one time a year. They played them the week before. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> it, and then played them again. At least they th fixed that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really... <laughs> that seems like a no-brainer to be able to fix that. Yeah, that'd be like opening the season against New Bedford and say, all right, we'll see you on Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, that's kind of oh, weird. Picked off. Oh, Almost! Now we, now that's interesting too. Jacob Figueredo basically lifted up our hilltopper who went lunging for the ball too, kind of carried him down. Close to a pick, and there was a lot of open fields. Yeah, I don't think Stang is the type of team that really wants to be having to throw the ball around. I think they're more of a, you know, historically always been like a wish-prone option team. We've seen a little bit of that tonight, but now you're seeing a little bit of shotgun here down 26 nothing with two minutes to go in the half. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, and I know what you're saying about passing. I think part of the reason is because uh, the offensive line can't hold Durfee. They're blitzing almost every time, and D, D G, uh, Giamo has been just taken down for a number of losses. He's been sacked two or three times already. And I'll tell you that we played Stang a few times, you know, over the years here, recent years since I've been around it. We couldn't do anything to stop them. I mean, so this is kind of a... Well, they do. They've always had a good program, and Coach oh, yeah. Golden's a great coach over there, and they've always kind of had that same attitude we, we talked about earlier where they've been tough. That's there it is. Off. To the house. There it is. Pick six, the second defensive touchdown of the half for the Hilltoppers. Wow. A good old fashioned Durfee beatdown here in week eight. 32 zip. For a Hilltoppers touchdown. Two defensive touchdowns in the first half. Wow. You call it. <laughs> for Stang, <laughs> don't pass the ball. <laughs> and, and again, the defense, it was just full on blitz. Every time they're passing, yeah, and the good defense. coverage downfield. I mean, Seriously. the ball got tipped, and you know, everybody was playing their zone. And Trying to get a, an extra point kick successful here, build some confidence for the kicker. I think that's wide as well. Yeah, wide left. He's got the distance on it. Just, he's got the distance, but he's got the Mike Nugent pull. Yeah. <laughs> <It's no good. laughs> Well, they, he lost He'll his work job on that. this week. <laughs> I know he did. 32 to nothing with a buck 45 to play in just the first half, folks. Durfee up 32 to nothing. And that was Brian Cruz again, right, with the interception for the touchdown? You were mentioning him on offense. He made a nice play, yeah. you know, in space out there. And then, it like was said, Cruz. He's making me look good because I said he plays both sides of the ball and he's a great right. maker. And, and <laughs> Coach Brown had a lot of great things to say about him. And then he makes a big play on offense, catches a two-point conversion, comes back on defense, picks it off, and takes it to the house. Wow. 
making me look like I know what I'm talking about. Ever. Right, I know. Normally everybody makes the liar out of me, yeah. so you're <laughs> you're getting lucky here. <laughs> Preparation. Well, I knew Durfee needed a win, and after the uh, after we had good luck with uh, the Somerset game on opening day, I figured I'd give you a call. So I think you're kind of the good luck. I wish you were available for Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, I wish, <laughs> but <too>. it's okay. <laughs> Thanksgiving will be live here on Fred TV on Thanksgiving morning, 10 o'clock game. And boy, do we hope that it will be sunny and not raining because we've had enough rain in the month of October. I'm still waiting for, for the day we end up with a snowball on Thanksgiving. I have to be honest. I know it wouldn't be fun necessarily for the conditions in terms of playing it, but it would kind of be a fun atmosphere, I think. The last oh, one I remember, it, this, it, it was Probably, it was like 2001 or two. Yeah, it's been a long time. That it was, it was cold. Yeah. Last year was cold enough. You remember a lot of teams switched to play Wednesday night it last year cold, because right. of how cold it would be in the morning. It was going to be right. warmer at night, <laughs> the night before on Thanksgiving Eve, than it would be in the morning. And they were right, because let me tell you, Diamond was one of the teams that switched and they hosted last year. So while we were getting ready to go on the road for Durfee to New Bedford on Thursday morning, Diamond moved to Wednesday night. Jake and I ended up going, we covered it. We got a snow squall pregame. Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts, but I'm not kidding when I say Thanksgiving morning was worse, yeah, even, was. even with the sun. It was worse. Now I think- I know I didn't go last year. Yeah. I, don't, I usually go every year, but- yeah. Now part of it could be too, because I was a little more dressed for it at Diamond Thanksgiving, you know, dressed in a suit and stuff, and uh, Vic and I decided last year that the next Thanksgiving game that we do together, we're not going to worry about being in full suit. We're going to dress for the elements. Yeah. <laughs> we'll still maybe have a shirt and a tie, but we're going to definitely dress more for the elements because it was brutal. New Bedford has radiators in their booth, and I brought the little space heater from this booth. You wouldn't have even known they were on. It was that bad. We might as well have just been outside on the roof because it was that bad. All right, 35 seconds, third down. Not third and 48, third and three. <laughs> third and three, under 30 seconds now. And I'm kind of surprised Stang just doesn't take it to the half. They get the ball to stop the third quarter. I mean, I know it's 32 nothing, but. Oh. QB keeper. That'll probably Ooh, do it. Kind of got bent backwards, too. DiGiamo, the ball carrier. DiGiamo on the carry. Stang starting a motion toward the. They're going to call a timeout, though. Timeout. Wow. Well, yeah, but you know, though, this your old school coach Golden, he's going to play it till the whistle. That's it. And I bet you, you mentioned Wynarski. I bet Steve Wynarski would do the same, too. That's just these guys that have been around for years. That's, that's. And that's not to say yeah, anything. And I think that's not saying anything against like you know the new age coaches and Coach Brown or anything. But that's just that's just the mentality. These guys who like you know have been coaching for years. It's always been that way. Well, I think looking down Stang's roster too. I mean, I haven't. This is the first time I've seen them this year. But there's a lot of underclassmen on on that roster as well. So you want to get them as many reps as possible. Especially, sure. I mean, today it seems like. Durfee's a little bit of a mismatch for him, so yeah, this you're is playing against you know guys that maybe are a little bit bigger or faster or stronger than you know you're used to playing against. So let's get as many reps as we can, you know, even though it's 32 nothing. We're not in the playoffs. Let's go play and try to build on it for next week or next year or, or whatever. So that's probably you know what he's going to say at halftime. Probably part of the reason why he called a timeout down 32 nothing. Right. You know, with 17 seconds to go in the half. Want to pass down the field, deep ball, incomplete. Stops the clock with 12 seconds. They'll get another snap. Hey, that's worth the shot. I mean, DiGiamo has an arm. We've seen he's been able to throw down the field. It's more about the accuracy. Yeah, and on the flip side, I mean, I know I mentioned the underclassmen and you're building towards, you know, next week or next year, but, you know, DiGiamo here, he's a senior. He doesn't have many snaps left. And no. for most guys, high school football is the end of the road. And it's not like playing basketball or baseball. Once you're, once you're done playing in high school, unless you go play in college and you don't put a helmet and shoulder pads on again. You know, you can't oh, just yeah. go to the park and play football like you can basketball or baseball. Or right, there'll always be ba baseball whatever. summer leagues and stuff, but there's not always a football summer league for non-pros. 
Incomplete pass, eight seconds to play, and it'll bring up third down and 10. This will probably be the last play to half either way, I would think. Third down and long. Yeah, most likely. Because even if they complete the pass, they get tackled right away. They're not getting to the line. No more timeouts for Stang. They've used all three. Be interesting to see how Derfy responds. You know, like you said, they're not used to probably being ahead 32 nothing. No. You know, at the half. So take the half to. Uh, we get delay a game. Uh, they're pointing to somebody. I think it might be a false start. It was weird because they weren't even set. It didn't seem like. Right. Right. Oh, of course it's on Derfy. Oh, okay. There you go. Well. I don't know what the penalty was, but. So right now we have the. Uh, we're winning the flag battle. We have more than Stang. I don't think Stang's been called on one. But when you're up 32 to nothing, I guess it's okay. Gonna hurl it again. Good spiral. That's gonna end the half. Good defense for the Hilltoppers. The Hilltoppers go into the half. 32 nothing the score over the Spartans after two quarters. What a fun first half at Mac Aldridge Field. We're gonna step aside. We'll have the senior night ceremony for you. That happened pregame. We're gonna run that right now. We'll see you on the other side with the third quarter on Fred TV. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Kelly Susie Young, Election Commissioner for the City of Fall River. You will notice some changes at the polls on November 5th. State-of-the-art voting machines will be used for the November 5th election. These are the same machines we used in the September preliminary election. You will see blank ovals on the ballot. Please completely fill in the oval next to the name of the candidates of your choice. Most municipalities in Massachusetts use the DS200 system. Now we do too. Training sessions are available upon request. Please make time to vote. It is your civic duty. We hope to see you at the polls on November 5th. If you have any questions, our poll workers will be happy to help. Thank you. Join us for an afternoon at Narrow Center for the Arts to celebrate the legacy and musical contributions of Michael Troy. The Michael Troy Foundation supports inclusive music education at Durfee. Michael's family invites you to be a part of this special fundraiser on Sunday, November 10th at the Narrows, 16 Anawan Street, Fall River. Performances begin at 1 p.m. Tickets are $25. Tonight is senior night, and we would like to take this time to recognize the hardworking senior band members, cheerleaders, and football players as well as their family and friends escorting them. Thank you all for your hard work throughout the entire season and your careers. We greatly appreciate your commitment and dedication to Durfee High School. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Also, thank you parents and family members for all of your support to your student athlete and to Durfee High School. We will start by recognizing the senior band members. Senior. Demetrius Crow, drum major, escorted by Jillian Ferreira. Senior, Matthew Barlageron, Barry Sachs and Woodwind Captain, escorted by Rory Botello. Senior, Dorothy Barros, Color Guard Captain, escorted by Ryan Ganyan. Now to recognize the senior cheerleaders. Senior Sam Souza, escorted by Garrett and Nicole Souza and sister Aubrey Souza. Senior Veronica Sang, escorted by Han Sang and On Sang.
senior, Aliyah Barros, escorted by Evanira Texera. Cameron Valcourt, escorted by Lynn and James Christensen and Matilda Angar. Jaden LaPointe, escorted by Amanda and Dave LaPointe. Cecilia Alou, escorted by Melissa and Mike Fogarty. And lastly, Isabella Hitu, escorted by Greta and Douglas Hitu, and sister Chanel Hitu. And for our senior football players, first, Derek Cordova, escorted by Glenda Lee Olivares and Lester Cordova. Kevin Padilla, escorted by Reina Padilla and Wilbur Padilla. Sebastian Centeo, escorted by Anna and Sebastio Centeo. And Emmanuel Allende, escorted by Maya Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, how about one last round of applause for our senior student athletes and extracurricular athletic participants. Honor, courage, sacrifice, pride, our city. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring our nation's soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. Vietnam veterans took the initiative to secure rights to an 80% size replica of the Healing Wall for Veterans Bicentennial Park. The names of over 58,000 fallen heroes will be engraved on the 360-foot long replica wall. 100% of the money raised benefits the building of our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Fall River. Help build our wall which is scheduled to open in 2020. The meaning, the spirit, and the value of the wall is everyone's. Be part of this exceptional, once-in-a-lifetime project. To make a donation, please visit vietnammemorialwall.org or connect with us at facebook.com. Welcome back, folks. Third quarter about to begin here on Fred TV. Evan Massoud and B.J. McDonald with you for the call. It is the Hilltoppers blowing out the Spartans here after two quarters. The score, 32 to nothing in favor of Durfee High School. What was a fantastic first half. Three offensive touchdowns, two defensive touchdowns. One was a fumble recovery run back. One was a pick six. Everything be going right for Durfee. And we can't, we don't normally get to say that today. Seems like the perfect game for the Hilltoppers, at least through two quarters. Yeah, great first half. I mean, they scored on the first play of the game, right up the middle. Jay Hall with a 65 yard touchdown to set the tone right off the bat, and they haven't looked back. So now you hope here to start the third quarter, you get a stop and just keep the, keep the momentum rolling. 
but this is not the start you're looking for. No, here's a chance, and it looks like it may be a return. No. Oh, there's a pushback. There's whistles. I think he might have stepped out of bounds. That was Paul's Liam Cogliano. It's interesting, as we were talking about it at halftime, it's probably not really a position Derek is used to being in. Right, you know, being ahead 32 nothing. So you don't, you scored 32 points in the first half. It doesn't mean Stan can't score 32 in the second half. Absolutely. So you gotta, you know, put them away here to start the third quarter and not lose the momentum. Yep, and this will be the best field position that Stang has had all game long after a almost 50 yard return. Hands it off on first down. Jacob Figueredo taking it, number 21. Good for a gain of four, three or four right up the middle. Tackled by number 68, I, I'm, Elijah what Rosenberg. I'm interested is, you know, with that veteran leadership of Coach Golden, I'm interested to see what Spartan. what Stang does here in the second half. It, you know, because really, I mean, offensively they looked lost in the first half, and defensively the Hilltoppers just ran it down their throats. So nothing really was working for the Spartans. That's why you see the score the way it is. So uh, I'm curious to see what. Yeah, they're not going to roll over and die. Oh God, think. no! I mean, of course, you not. know. I think uh, play the game like it's 0-0 zero, zero and no game try to win the play. second half. You know, first win third the third down. quarter, Sparkles. try to win the fourth quarter, and, you know, if you're Durfee, you want to put them away. I mean, you know, make sure that don't give them any life. Don't let them put one in here and give them any uh, thought that they're going to come back. If you're staying, you get it's one play at a time, it's one score at a time. You're not going to put 32 points up with one play, so. Right. There's a lot of cliche football cliches in there, sure. but that's really what it comes down to is it's going to be one play at a time and one score at a time. Third down, and the Spartans have stopped. So it's another, yep. there it is. Fourth, There's a momentum fourth play, fourth and four. Fourth, fourth down, down coming. Tackled by number two, Dante Sawyer. Fourth down, Spartans. Fourth and four. Right on the 15. After the great return, a four-yard pickup on first down. It was a no gain on second. Two-yard pickup on third down. Going to pass. It is complete, and that'll be good for the first down. As Did you get it? It's close. Yeah, you got it. All right. Just outside the 10-yard line, so it'll be first and 10. They'll be able to pick up another first down, you know, just probably outside the one or just inside the one-yard line. Yeah, looking like it's on the 11-yard line. It's not quite the 10 yet, so you're right. There is room if they need two sets of downs, but, you know, when you get to this point in the field, you're looking end zone. And the Hilltoppers are looking for a big, a big play here. Figueredo gets the handoff, dives down toward the five-yard line. Figueredo, the ball carrier. I know it's difficult probably, but you know, Durfee seems to be lacking a little bit of energy here to start the third quarter. And you don't want to get into any bad habits. Oh, God. You know, no. you're not used to being in this position where, you know, essentially you feel like the game is over at halftime. Mm -hmm. But you it can't really is. Yeah, and it really is, you know, a lot can happen. Right. We saw that in the first half. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Figueroa went diving down. Picked up a yard, it's gonna bring up third and about four or five from the, no the maybe five or six yard line. And five for the Spartans. Looking like third news is the clock's running. Yeah. Looking like third and four coming up from the five yard line. The line to gain is the one yard line, and of course the end zone just five yards away as the Spartans looking to get on the board here for the first time in week eight. Passing to the end zone, almost picked off. Looked like they got tangled up there. He read yeah. that pretty well. That Jayden was uh, Lewis. Yep, Jaden Lewis cut it off. Probably should have been picked, and I'll tell you, you want to talk open field. <laughs> yeah, it looked like they just got caught up. His legs got tangled yeah. up with their receiver there. If he didn't trip, it's Yeah, he would have had a 95-yard return. Yep, he would have gone all the way. So another fourth down play coming up for the Durfee defense, fourth and four from the five. 
DiGiamo. Incomplete on that third down pass. We'll see if he goes to the air here on fourth down. Pressure coming, gets the pass off, oh, and is caught. Open. Wide open for the touchdown, and the Spartans have something to cheer about here to start the third quarter. 32 to six. And they're gonna go for two. And oh, yeah. at 32 points, I mean, that's a, it's a four score game, right? Four yeah. touchdowns with four two point conversions. So there is a little bit of life here in the, in the Spartans. A quick touchdown to start the third quarter and probably a big two point play here. Definitely a big two point play. Otherwise you're looking at needing four touchdowns and then some versus three touchdowns and three more two point conversions. And that's assuming Durfee doesn't score again. Right, you Stang know, hasn't stopped them all night. Right, if Durfee scores again, I think it's you know safer to say that it's, it's more in the bag if they get it back up to a 32 point margin. But gonna go for the two, pressure is coming and oh, is he gonna run? He will run it, oh, oh it's picked off. He shuffled past it and I don't think that the Spartans came away with it. I think it was into Durfee hands. And they're quite a bit of ways from us, but it looked like there was a lot nope. of red. Yeah, incomplete. So that's a, a big stop there. Honestly, um, DiGiamo could have just run it in. You're looking at two yards. I don't think he tried to throw that. No, I think maybe it just came loose. Yeah, I think he got he popped, maybe a punch from behind. popped out. I yeah. think so. Because he, he definitely tucked it under like he was ready to run, and then all of a sudden the ball was bouncing right. around. Right. All right, so 32-6 to six as Stang gets on the board. They... Avoid a shutout here. A lot of fans have left at the half, too. It is quite cold. And I know the Durfee cheering section here is really thinned out right in front of us. Oh, and a few of them coming back. Maybe they're still in the lines looking for the Swiss Miss hot chocolate. Can't blame them. I can't blame them. That was, that was good. I haven't had hot chocolate in a long time. This third quarter not brought to you by Swiss Miss. <laughs> 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 Although we'll take any advertising dollars they want to throw our way. <laughs> hey, scholarship money any day. Oh, man. <laughs> the Stang fans either have thinned out as well or they shifted because they were pretty full on the right side of the bleachers. Now they're dead center on that far side. But I think a lot of people headed home at halftime. We can't blame them. 45 no. minute delay, you know. It's yeah, it's a long night. Or so long night. Oh, yeah. So Durfee was all the way up expecting the onside kick. They kick it deep. And Lewis picks it up. And across the middle. Look at this. Has some room. Has a blocker there. He says, cut this. to the outside. Jaden Lewis See down ya. the sidelines. See ya. A kickoff return. Boy, we've seen it all here tonight at wow. Mac Aldrin. Oh, a flag back at the 50 yard line. Oh, my God. This guy, give me a break. <laughs> Unbelievable. Fourth time a touchdown has been taken off the board. Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, it's really, really poor. Really poor. All right, we saw the cut back here. There wasn't a hold. If anything, it was a block. I don't think anybody even really blocked anybody no. because the ball was kicked deep and it was kind of a... That know, was right in front of us. For all. There was I no hold know. there. I mean... <laughs> that's ridiculous. That really is ridiculous. Yeah, it's you know, horrible. You know, for the, at least for the Hilltoppers, we should be thankful that they're... Up 32 to six, because if this was a one score game and that just you know opened it up a bit, that would hurt way more than it does now. It's, yeah, it's, it's horrible. Still a, a, it's still a bad call. It's just, it's unfortunate when the referees try to insert themselves into the game. Like just, you know. I mean, the, the plays where it's been taken away, I mean, these are huge plays. You're talking a kickoff return for 80 something yards. Jay Hall, the ball carrier, tackled by number three. Well, the good news is we got the ball, right. the clock's moving. Second Stang hasn't stopped their feet all night. Right. So, you know, you choose some clock here. The interesting thing is as you, you know, if this lead continues to swell, the Hilltoppers don't have a JV team. So, right. uh, there, we talked about it earlier, there hasn't been enough interest and there has not enough bodies to even field the JV team. So you get to that point, you know, there's a fine line where uh, you don't necessarily even have a ton of backups to, to put in and- Here you go, Jay Hall, go. breaking through. 
Slows up, cuts back, takes a hit. They're gonna call him out of bounds. Call the ball carrier. Run out of bounds by number We sure there wasn't a hold on that play? Oh wait, they, they didn't score. score. They didn't score, that's right. First <laughs> down. Just about under seven minutes in the third quarter. Nowhere to go there. Now Keyshawn Rue trying to cut back in on first down. Rue the ball carrier. No gain on the play. And no gain. One of the really only bad runs of the night for Durfee. Staying kind of buttoned up the middle there. So we we'll play it here. Second down from the 23, second and 10 after no gain. Oh, he jumped, oh, he escaped the tackle. Are you kidding me? Jay Hall should have been taken down in the back by Ben Gowell. And he literally skipped right out from underneath him. That's crazy. He's, a, he's an athlete for sure. He really is. Hall, just a sophomore. Third down and eight. Durfee in no hurry, which is very smart. Yeah, just, you know, you take go. the time. Get up pass complete by Look Thomas. Coming to the touchdown. corner. He wants a touchdown pass. Easy peasy. Javon Holly. Number three, Javon Holly is caught. No flags. <laughs> nice throw by Isaiah. Yeah. Nice job by the offensive line. Great catch and run by Javon Holly. And uh, I think that so much for that staying comeback. Right. Is that the first touchdown pass for? I forget now. We've seen so many touchdowns. That, that was the first one. No, first today, one of the yeah. air, right? Of yeah. the yeah. year? No, of the, the air. Oh, in the yeah. air. Because uh, Cruz almost got in on the far side, but he, then he got stopped. Right. So that was the one I was thinking of. Right. So first. And he threw a two point, uh, the two point conversion Cruz caught right. over here. That's right. So first passing touchdown, though, of the night. It's Durfee's sixth touchdown. There it is. That one. Oh, yep. Yeah. Down Main Street. I can't tell from this angle if it's <laughs> wide, right, left, down the middle. It's tough. But that one is good, and it's 39 to 6. That's Jay Hall kicking, too, right? Is it is, Hall? yeah. Yeah, yeah. kickoffs, kick with uh, extra points. He punts. He plays defense. He plays offense. He does a little bit of everything. Pretty much. 5.16 to play in the quarter. But just going back to what I said before, too, it's interesting kind of dilemma that, you know, Durfee probably hasn't had in a long time where you don't have a ton of backup players that don't play. They're just not a lot of numbers. So, yeah. you know, you don't want to uh, be disrespectful to the other team and Coach Golden and, you know, his squad. But, oh, you, you know, a lot of these cases, the yeah, you, you know, yeah, you see yeah. teams put in their, their JV team in the fourth quarter. But from Durfee's standpoint, they don't, they don't have a JV team. No. <laughs> Got a freshman But I team. guess it's a good problem to have tonight. Saying, We're not going to complain about that no. one. No. The, the Hilltoppers have not had a game like this in years. So, as far as I'm concerned, keep the pedal down and build on this. This is a huge confidence booster. You're coming in against a team with a winning record. I know Stang is in a lower division, but, again, Stang is, Stang's manhandled us before. So this is, uh, and again, playing Dartmouth. Dartmouth's had an off season. You know, they haven't had a, the best year, but beat Dartmouth on the road, at, you know, last week. So they're coming in with some momentum, and the Hilltoppers, you know, put their statement down 22 seconds into the game tonight. Yeah, and I think that this might actually, you know, make that Dartmouth loss sting a little bit more for the Hilltoppers. Know. You know, that was a, a game they felt they should have won, could have won, probably do win, you know. Yeah. Two years in a row, the they, time they and, lost it. Um, unfortunate that, you know, they let it slip away, but after a couple tough weeks against a couple very, very good teams in Barnstable and Brockton, 
you know, it all came together here tonight. Sure did. Running it on first down, a pickup of two yards, second and eight. Morales, the Defense has played great. I mean, that touchdown Second drive there was Sawyer. a short drive after the long kick return by Stang. So the Durfee defense has been great. The offense Second has been great. Spartan. And Durfee, you know, had multiple, two fourth down uh, opportunities to stop him as well. So they weren't allowing Stang to just, you know, pick up five yards here, five yards there. Really, I think if, the, if we want to nitpick, Maybe we say special teams work on the returns because Stang has had some decent returns. That's right. really been the only spot they've gotten decent yardage all, all night long. And as you said earlier in the game, returns are like the hardest thing to, to defend on because so many things can happen when you have full sprinting, <laughs> head on collisions and everything, you know, so. We got a new quarterback in for Stang. That's number two, Dylan Aguiar. Yeah, the junior replacing Diamo. But Stang's roster considerably larger. Oh, tackle down the great tackle. That was uh, Cruz. <laughs> that was a good job by Jaden too, though. Forced him back into the middle, you know, playing on the outside. Kept his outside arm free. Forced the guy back into the middle where he had all his help. Gain of one yard. Fourth down and seven, Spartan. So looking at fourth down here in seven. Hilltoppers hoping to take over on downs. Looking to pass, Aguiar dropping back, pressure is coming. There is a flag in the backfield. He gets tackled out of play right around the line of scrimmage. But again, a flag coming in from the back. That should be a hold on Stang, I'd imagine. There is a flag on the play. Although, I say this probably I, against Derfy. I think this would be Stang's first penalty <laughs> of the game. Uh, seriously, I, I'm trying to think back. And no, I don't they really have. There haven't been many penalties other than <laughs> on the, the holding but calls. But you decline that penalty if it's against Stang, and it will be a turnover on downs. Right. So Derfy takes it back over. Really, the, again, the only the only penalties really were uh, there was an offside, and then there was the the holding calls that negated the touchdowns. Other than that, they really haven't been. A lot of flags. So Durfee takes over at their own 42 with 326 to play in the third. Of course, if you're watching this, it's uh, it's Monday. This being a Friday night game at the weekend. Oh, oh a fumble. <clears throat> I think he might have fallen back on it, though. Threw the ball carrier. I he think did, and he picked up four or five. Four, second and six. Gain of three yards. One thing Durfee has second not done tonight is turn the ball over. And I'll tell you, protecting the ball is the number one thing. What a difference that makes. Right? When you don't Seriously. turn the ball over. Timeout called. It's a pretty simple game, Ev. Just yeah. don't turn the ball over, block and tackle. Right? So an official timeout. Somebody hurt. Oh, uh, Kelly Mahoney, our trainer, going across the field. There was they called for the trainer. So uh, Ben Goel was hurt on that last play, apparently. So Kelly went to check him out, and uh, yeah, he sent the doctor over. Yeah, I need some help over there. So, but uh, as I, I was about to say that you know this is a Monday and uh, it's a big week here in the city and uh, with the election on Tuesday, you know, again, we want to, we just want to cover, you know, we're an educational channel and, uh, you know, doing your civic duty, getting out and voting is important, but making an informed vote is even more important. So, you know, do your homework and uh, let's, let's bring that voter turnout 
percentage up. It's been so low over the last few few elections, and God knows our city, we've had a lot of crazy elections. There's been some crazy stuff, and uh, so we hope that the voters come out and uh, you know really make make their voices known and let the city have have their say. That's what it's about. That's why we vote. So. And uh, you know, we, we encourage that at the high school level with the 18-year-olds here, the seniors, you know, having rocked the vote, trying to get the high schoolers registered to vote so that they can take an interest in in their city as well in their country. And uh, so it's you know it's important stuff. So city election on Tuesday, get out and vote. The polls open early. They close at 8 p.m. There's plenty of time. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to go and vote. So uh, get out there and do your civic duty. And we'll have live election coverage from Government Center, Pamela Martin, Keith Tebow on FRG TV, Channel 18, the Government the Channel, carrier. our sister station. We'll have live coverage as we always do. It's the official Ripping Government forever. Channel for all things city related. That'll kick off at 8 p.m. on Election Tuesday, right after that the polls good close. For a hilltopper. First down. So we're under two minutes to go in the third quarter. First down, Hilltoppers. A couple guys in there that really I don't think we've seen too much of. Uh, while you were uh, talking there, Ever was number 48, Jermaine Torres. He got a carry. I think that was his first carry of the night. He's the deep man now on first down. He's going to get it again off the left side. Yep. Well, he breaks through. Nice run there on first down. And, and I think you're right. You know, while we don't have a JV team, B, you mentioned that. We're seeing the regulars are out. I see Holly on the sideline. Hall, Jermaine Lewis, Cruz, uh, Ronald Genty. They're all on the sidelines here. Those guys Talk all wearing some of the single-digit numbers and are really a lot of the playmakers. So my guess is uh, it's kind of a run-out-the-clock situation right now with the score the way it is. 60 seconds now to play in this third quarter. And I think you're going to see some of the... Uh, you're not trying to embarrass anybody. You know, well, everybody's got a lot of respect for Coach Golden and, and his right. team. And, you know. Right. First down. And then some... We talked about Durfee being on the other end of these things, you know, yeah. over the years. And... It's good to be on this side of it. It sure is, yeah. I, I stand by what I said. I, I haven't called a, a Durfee blowout, I, honestly, for football. I don't think ever. And this is, you know, my first fall season was 2012. And all I can remember, you know, and I was doing... Well, and that was the height of, you know, the biggest mistake that the athletic department's ever made when getting rid of Coach Wynarski and setting the program back, you know, a dozen years or so before you get the thing back on track. Mm -hmm. So that was... A travesty would happen to him in, in you know doing what that was done there and it took forever to you know you, you went through a carousel of coaches and you can't build a program with a different coach every year no no you're right you know and that's why guys like see guys like coach golden they you know they stick around for a long time they build Ooh, that the program up um and the program takes on the identity of the head coach you know mm -hmm. and I think that was the, the, the end of three quarters, identity that Coach Wynoski's teams had were similar to the identity Thanks of, Martin's you know, the, the teams that Coach Brown's trying to build. Right. Tough, it, tough hard-nosed football. Let's run the ball. Let's block and tackle. And that's not surprising because, as you said earlier, you know, Taylor, he played under Coach Wynoski. So, you know, he had that that base from, from Coach Wynoski. So. They all did, the whole staff. And Taylor, right. Chris Thomas, Nathan Levesque, yep. Timmy Powers. You, um, <laughs> when you coached yeah. and played, oh yeah, yep. All right, third quarter is done, so we're switching sides here. The, the timeout for the officials to reset. So final 12 minutes on the clock here at Mac Aldridge Field. The score 39 to six. The Hilltoppers with the advantage, and then some. They gotta have close to 300 yards rushing. No. Oh yeah, they've done nothing but run the ball. Now the pick six was good for about, that was about 50 yards, 55 yards. The, the fumble recovery was about 30, 35 yards. So those are defensive runbacks. Yeah, defensive so touchdowns. But probably two, I mean, Jay oh, Hall's gonna have 100 yards. Easily over two, I would say. I, I mean, they'd probably be, cl they'd be close to 400 yards if they didn't have those touchdowns taken back on the holding calls. For sure. We got a stat update from Coach Jay Hall at 126 yards in the first half. 
So we'll have to yeah. wait to tally up and watch the film in the second half to yeah. see where he finished up. But over 100 yards in the first half. Tackle down. Looked like uh, Derek Cordova, one of the seniors, getting some time to run the ball, some playing time here in the fourth quarter. Gets the first down at, I want to see the 12-yard line, so first and, first and 10 from about the 12. The Hilltoppers trying to go over 40 points. So be getting the word here uh, from our official in the booth that with the score the way it is, I guess a somewhat mercy rule is in effect here, part of the Federation rules, as the Hilltoppers are gonna, I think, punch it in. Yeah, they they will! 45 to six, Durfee over 40 points. How about that? But this, the clock will roll here because of the score being so lopsided. Only injuries will stop it, not even timeouts. Not even this reset here for uh, the extra point. It's literally just That's run right. the clock. So That's right. It's making up for the 45 minute, you know, <laughs> light delay we had earlier. No, exactly. Get out of here. Real time here. It's uh, the game is two hours old, and uh, so it's 9:30. It should have started at seven. We didn't start till just after 7:30. So it has, it has been a long game and a lot of scoring. That kick is good as well from Hall. Nope. Oh Told no! You. Wow! You can't tell. So I, I was good in the. No good. <laughs> I was good. There's more light on that left side. That one no good though. So, 45 to six with 10 to play, and counting. Wow! And that touchdown was Keyshawn Rue. So he had yep. one called back in the first half. So good to see him get one in after mm -hmm. they took one away from him earlier. They've had a. It's been pretty balanced as far as who's doing the scoring. I mean, you're led by Jay Hall with a couple touchdowns, but. Across the board now, getting some other guys involved and right finding uh, finding pay dirt. Gonna have to go back into the uh, into the archives for scores to try to figure out the last time the Hilltoppers had a victory this lopsided where they got up at over 40 points because this has just been a tremendous effort for Durfee from top to bottom. And hopefully it's something to build on. We've talked really? about the you know the reseeding and the, the different pools that you go in and mm -hmm. you know now that you're. You're in that non-playoff bracket. Hopefully you get another team that's, you know, you can build on and get a couple more wins. Yeah, there are a couple wins um, going back, I want to say f maybe four or five years ago. I think it might have been Taylor's first or second year with that, this non-playoff brackets where they had some success. Where they put up 30-something points. And one of those years they beat Nosset. Nosset was having kind of a down year. They won, I want, I want to say, three or four out of those last games. Well, that's a loose ball, but it will be picked up by the Spartans. Um, I think that was Brad Kilby's oh, year, uh, Mike Correa. I think he was still coaching when we lost. Kilby was out on Thanksgiving Tackles out in New Bedford. Spartans. I think oh, that yeah. was the overtime game, yeah, maybe. It was overtime, man. Yeah. Nick Salmon was still playing. Um, I think that, if I, if yeah, I recall... Eli Brooks. Yeah, if I recall, yeah, Brooks, I think, was a, he was a sophomore or a junior that year. He didn't graduate because his last game was here when he got his 2,000th yard. Um, so if, if memory serves right, because, of course, it's starting to all blur. Yeah. <laughs> but if memory serves right, um, that that season, Durfee had some good success in this, this round of November games, and they were putting up about 30 a game. Because I remember doing kind of the stats, and it was kind of a tale of two seasons at you know for Durfee. So, right. um, I, so if we want to talk about offense and winning some games, arguably you could say it's probably been four or five years since they had a, you know a solid victory like this. Not not a blowout, but just you know a solid one by a few touchdowns. Yeah, they've dominated know. this game from yeah. start to finish. This is I mean, this the first is play of the game they scored and. You know, Stang is just, they've been overmatched, and I don't know if they, they didn't come to play, and, you know, I, I don't know, or if Durfee played really well, but I think you've got to give Durfee a lot of credit oh, for yeah. coming out and scoring right off the bat and not taking their foot off the gas. Second and a long six, they'll run it. Pickup of, say, three yards, we'll be looking at 
third and a long three, third and four. Well, going back to, you know, the first half, you said we had Jake down there doing, you know, some uh, shooting for you, the promos and stuff. Right. These are, this is the best promo you can have for the football team, you know, getting the word out that, hey, right. you know, it's fun and it's fun to win and how fortunate that we you know getting that footage on you know on a night where we're scoring a lot of points making some defensive stops got the fumble recovery so you know it all kind of worked out we tried to do this um back in week four which was against nosset Durfee's last regularly scheduled home game and uh unfortunately we weren't able to do so we had a couple people sick that were supposed to work the game. We were actually going to have the drone going too. We were going to uh, get cool. a couple shots hovering over the over the light tower, the, the, the uh, clock tower. And, um, but uh, it didn't, couldn't do it. Just couldn't, we didn't end up with enough staff and hey, what, what do you do when someone gets sick? I mean, <laughs> it happens. So, um, so Jake uh, kind of rearranged, we rearranged his coverage with us and he was able to work tonight and it worked out perfectly because Nosset wasn't a lot of offense at all, you know, and it ended up being a loss for Durfee. So this is this is everything you could want. Maybe you can Photoshop those flags out of a couple of those runs on your <laughs> highlight film. <laughs> well, you know, nobody knows if you're watching it on a promo and just seeing, you know, Holly running running into your TV set. No one knows if there was a flag thrown unless it gets in the shot. So we'll we'll review that footage, but. A good solid run from Holly is definitely used, or, or whoever was running. Uh, we said Rue was had one taken away too. So B-roll can be used a lot easier than this game footage, and that's why we're using a different camera for that. And wanted somebody on the sideline to get that different on the field angle. Okay, no. Working on your Thanksgiving promos? Um, no, not yet. Actually, we're, we're trying to get through the election and the. Veterans Day Parade, it's just th this week here is like the perfect storm of everything going on um, at once, you know. So November, when, when it always happens because of the way, you know, it's, it's every other year. So every two years, and then elections are on two years. So every year that Durfee hosts Thanksgiving and we have to be the host broadcast live, we also get Election Day. Uh. You know, the parade, we always have the, par the parade. Um, that's the annual. But um, but yeah, you know, November. Whenever it's a, a host year on Thanksgiving, ball, November is a it's a crazy no game. crazy November Fourth month. That's for sure. So fourth down here, four minutes and ten seconds to play as the clock just keeps on rolling. Oh, and they're switching personnel here. Wow, big changes. Assuming they're yeah, gonna punt it, yeah. Dropping back is uh, Tyler, Tyler Medeiros. It's fourth down and nine at midfield. Good punt. Falling fast, and it's gonna roll a while. All the way down inside the fives, the Hilltoppers way back deep. You probably just take a knee, the clock's gonna run anyway, so probably just set off, yeah. I would think. Yeah, what's what's the worst that happens? You give it back to Stang, maybe 20 seconds. <laughs> Timeout Hilltoppers. Oh, and that'll eat up some time. So that's going to allow them to take the knee. Oh, uh, yeah. because That's what it's going to do. Because, again, the clock's going to keep rolling. The clock rolling. doesn't even stop on the timeout. Oh, and Greg Sullivan has entered the booth to come and harass us in the final two minutes, as he usually does. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. The last t last game I did here was the Nosset game. And uh, Greg was hanging around, and he's, like, admiring the new handheld mic that – that I have, and so I said, fine. I said, I'll plug it in. I know you just want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so so Greg joined me for those last two minutes last time. <laughs> I think he's on double duty tonight, coming from staying triple. Triple duty for Greg Sullivan. 
I tried to help you out. I sent you a tweet at halftime, Greg. <laughs> Two minutes to play. Uh, probably going to get whacked for delay. I don't know. Possible. Hilltoppers hit the field now, 90 seconds to play. They will pick up victory number three here of the season. Oh, high snap. They're going to run a play. Wow, I really didn't expect that. <laughs> and a flag in the back. The least surprising thing of all time. <laughs> you really don't like those yellow mm. flags. <laughs> I mean, you're really going to throw a flag. It's 45 to 6. There's a minute to go. They probably don't even. You got one snap left. Well, you know. They don't, might not even have to. Did they even set the ball yet? I was just going to say, the clock is rolling whether he throws the flag yeah. or not, so why not? Let him do it. 45 seconds. Taylor should call timeout and just <laughs> go shake hands. Thirty seconds to play. Well, B, thanks for joining me tonight because this is uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, no, like, like I said, we had uh, we did the Somerset game to start the year, and uh, I kind of got you short notice here. But I'm glad because obviously we didn't know we were going to have a home game this sure. week until the weekend. So that's it. Ten seconds. Thank you for joining me, B. This was a lot of fun, man. We haven't had a game like this at Mac Aldridge Field in years. Congrats to the Hilltoppers. What a game. 45 to 6, the final score. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, Everything thanks for having worked. me, Ev. It was a lot of fun, like you said, and uh, glad to see the Hilltoppers get a convincing win here tonight. For sure. All right. For our camera guys, our, our two students, Cameron and Nathan, thanks for braving the elements. Little extended play here with that delay, like we said. For BJ, my broadcast partner, I'm Evan Massoud. So long from Durfee High School. And don't forget, Thanksgiving, live from right here at Mac Aldridge Field and on Channel 9. Good night, everybody. <laughs>